Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. And what a wonderful, great day to begin today. When the market is red, we try to stay green. Today's date is May the 20th, 2019, and Miss Vegas has prepared the watch list for us tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, yeah, tomorrow, I guess. Um, yeah, so I just want to talk about uh, the trades from today, actually. And I uh, want to talk about BABA as a follow-up. We're also going to talk about OTLK, FSI, KIQ, and WIT. So let's talk about BABA. So we mentioned yesterday in the um, market report that these would be the, um, you know, two st this would be a stock that I'd be looking really more from the options perspective. And mainly because of the fact that this is a Chinese play and the stock is pulling back. And, you know, when that's with the trade war tensions, uh, you know, this is going to have an effect. So we did buy these option calls on Friday at 40 cents. And uh, the high of day was really nice here. Um, the high of day on this one went as high as I think it was 323. I'll have to just double check. Um, I actually closed my BABA put because, you know, the thing is with options, you really got to take these profits because if you don't, you know, so it, the stock was playing a little around, playing around today because then it started to reverse. So um, the, the stock went as high as, um, the option call went as high as 350 from a 40 cent uh, put. So from a $40 investment could have made as much as, you know, $310 profit. Um, I closed it myself at actually 183. So I was happy with that. I mean, listen, uh, that was over 400% profit. Um, could have held on and, and let it go. But you know what? The stock started to reverse around 10 o'clock. And it went from basically 160 and it went all the way up to 163.89. So, you know, my option would have decayed significantly. And then um, later in the day, the, the, the actual BABA stock did pull back. And um, I'm going to still keep a watch on this because this, to me, if this doesn't hold 160.37, I think there's going to be room for this to go down to 155, maybe even lower. But uh, I'll be watching this again tomorrow, but not from a call side more from the put side and jim what do you think of the chart here on baba well we had to this last call i said it probably would go to a support level of right around uh oh, 167.92 i think's what i said yeah 167.92 is where i had a trend line and that was the previous resistance we had right here so i kind of called that a support and then today we hit the low support that i called out and that was down here at the 160, um, 160 93 level. So I think you did the right thing by getting out of your trade today. I really do. I think that was a wise decision. We are down here at an RSI uh, crossover down here at the bottom today. We did hit that down there at that 30 level on the RSI on a yearly daily chart. And I'm going to pull up the 20 day and have a look at the 20 day now. But yeah, that, that, that's a good solid place where you got out today at. So let me pull up the 20 day and that's seeing the same thing. I think it might reverse from here a little bit and have a little bounce up. But like you said, with all the news that's in the, in the news right now in the trade war, it's kind of the sediment and the algorithms are pointing this in a downward pattern. So I'm going to pull up that six month chart one more time and see if I can find me another support level. Maybe if we can go down to, and there's one right here. I see it 158.27, and I need to put this on. So right here, right around the one, 158, 39, and then another one right here. I like this level real well, 156. So more than we come in here, even after hours, if this starts going down below that low that we had today of 160, you could probably possibly see another dip on down to the 156 area with a real low support low low at 151.46 and I'd consider that probably starting to think about a strong buy at that 150 what I say 
Yeah, 151.46. That's about, and I'm going to put another one right here at 149.06 just in case. So this is how we're going to look at it. I think Miss Vegas got out at the perfect spot there at the 160 level, 161. If it d decides to pull back some more, you got two more supports to look at. That's the 158.39 and the 156, period. $156. We've had three huge gap downs on this. I mean, there were big gaps in between each day of the market. So, I mean, we were up here at a high of 178. Now we're down here at 160. So that's, you know, that's a $17 pullback in three days on this trade. So let's look at it again tomorrow and see what happens. But keep it all in watch. Definitely. And if it starts to re return, you can get back to the previous high that we had today. And that was at 164.32. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be one that Miss Vegas has called out, and it's one of our one of our our best arsenals is price analysis. And OTLK is it, Miss Vegas? Well, you know what OTLK, you know Outlook Therapeutics. I mean, they already had an offering from before, and you know we traded this on Friday, but then you know Friday, like I said in the video yesterday, I mean the stock pulled back and it didn't reverse, and you know maybe people were selling off because they didn't want to hold into the weekend. Did, you know different reasons why a stock pulls back. I mean, it's it's hard to give you the right answer, but. You know, you had to definitely, like I said, keep your eyes always focused also on the tape action, the volume, and the, the actual float. And, um, you know, I did mention that the stock had a pocket pivot, which it was evident. And, you know, we did say yesterday, Jim did mention that he was watching for OTLK to break 247 and 257. And you know what? If you were listening to the video and you traded this today, congratulations, you did well on this trade. I mean, right now, even after hours, it's trading at 340, went as high as 348. I mean, that's almost a dollar a share today um, just from uh, a swing trade. I mean, I wouldn't have even had to babysit the stock uh, because it had a nice pocket pivot. And, um, you know, Jim, what are your thoughts on the stock? Because it's still running after hours here. Uh, it's had, you know, 50 million volume today. Yeah. That's a lot of volume that's on a. Lot of volume. a you know, 11, you know, 11.8 million shares. That's a lot. And the volume slowed down a little bit, but not much. And what no, was No, cool but it just made a new high just now after hours. Yep. So here we are. We had these three black crows that I mentioned in the video, and we had that huge gap we had to fill. Well, that gap got filled today. We had to hit a high of, well, the resistance line on it, or the support level was right at 311. So we hit that gap and we filled that gap, and that's a very important, uh, uh, oh, uh, you know what I'm thinking, very important <laughs> uh, thing to do, <laughs> and excuse me for my French, and let me pull up the, uh, let me pull up the 20 day, and we can look at the 20 day real fast, and so we had to hit that 311, and we did, right after hours now, we're up here at 348. And that was just a beautiful call. We did call, I called two or three different uh, things on it today during the market hours. Called the pullbacks and I called the re-entries. Re, re and we're going to pull up the daily one minute and I'm going to show them to you. We had the huge breakout this morning. It did pull back to that support channel that I called in the room here at 295, 205 to 214. It did pull back to that entry level and I did have that channeled out when we talked about it Sunday. And then we had the huge breakout that ran all the way up to three bucks. Once it hit that three dollar level, Miss Vegas mentioned it. I said we had to get to three fifteen, but it pulled back. It hit that three dollars, and then it pulled back to support, which was at two fifty seven. That I said we had to break um, Sunday in the in the Sunday report. So it held support there. Now the best thing about this, it followed my thirty four EMA all the way up, and then once it failed it it run back into the 200 EMA and held support there. So I was able to form an ascending triangle out of that pattern, and that's right here, as you can see, and it failed that pattern and it pulled on back. So the shorts had their little fun here, knowing that the, that the bulls are still on top of this trade. So it did pull back to my support level that I had right here at 264. You can see where it hit the bottom right there during pre-market, or right after open, after the big run. And that created a little support level. So I'm going to draw that trend line in here right now at the 264 area. And that's where it started to bounce up again. 
and let me pull up let me go back to the uh, the daily one minute or daily three minute then we had another little breakout on it and that's right in here once it hit that 64 level she started to run up and you could see the trend that it pulled right here and we had another ascending triangle pattern on the way up and usually when that happens you'll get a huge breakout and here we are busting up after hours we're at 356 so I mean this trade's really running after hours we closed today at three dollars and now we're up another 50 cents on this trade and you can see by the tape I'm gonna pose the tape right here to the side not too big blocks coming in but when you see a thousand thousand shares seven thousand block right there so that's pretty good size so this is how we got to look at it tomorrow and it'll definitely pull back but I think the shorts are gonna let this thing run because they know they've been beat they know they've been beat and so the support level on this trade is gonna be right here at 318 I'm gonna put a red line on that so I can remember it tomorrow and good job Miss Vegas I really have to give it to you on this one uh, well volume precedes price I say it all the time no one believes me oh, so I, I even believe when the you. stock even when the stock pulls back you know people give up on the stock and they're like oh you know it's done it's done I ain't touching it anymore and then they don't they forget to look at well before you you know look at the like look at the look at the volume and look at the flow I mean yep. and it already had the offering and we already know what they're doing with their money because yep. they already had the earnings and they explained what they're doing with the, with the money so um, you know, I wasn't concerned about another offering on OTLK. So good job, good job, and uh, explained on voice uh, float rotation. So yeah, people are learning. Yep, and people so are learning. We've got three, which is what it's all, which is what it's all about. Honestly, like you know, I love knowing that you know the thesis is intact and it's correct. Um, but it's really more about you know love teaching it to other people to learn. Yeah, for them to learn. Yeah, and 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 I'm one too. That if I see a trade like this and it does finally pull back, and a lot of a lot of traders will forget about these trades, and and I'm still watching. I got it on my watch list for another week at least, maybe for a dead cat bounce or anything like that. So, it's when you get something like this that's really run on momentum and and the volume. Here we are at 358. The tape's getting yeah. bigger. 360. Well, as we're talking, I I told the room that I'm taking a position at 340. Yeah. So that's, we're here now, 360 new highs, because I'm seeing some action here after hours, and it's funny because it actually broke the 335 resistance after hours. Yeah. And so, that's what I was looking for the whole day, and it yeah. never broke. And then suddenly after hours, it broke the 335. Yes. So, so and I had a support level. I was going to call it out. These are the three supports that I'm going to look at tomorrow: 318, 326, and that 340 area. What's the next resistance here on this one here, Jim? At, the next uh, resistance. OTLK. Yeah, I'm going to have to find After some. After 364. I got $4. $4 after yep. 364? Yep. Wow. $4, and then you got another one right here, right around 425, and then you got another. I mean, you're running off an engulfing candle here, a red one at 456. So those are the three, $4, four and a quarter, and four fifty-six for tomorrow. Pullback support are those ones, three red lines, plus maybe I'll add that three fifty to it now. And I'm going to pull that up again on the one minute. So, yeah, I'm going to change this also, this three fifty to your first support level, but I think it can pull back to that red, to that three forty. That's going to be your solid support. So the three red line support levels. 350 and then 340? Yeah. Okay. But the three red line ones are 317, 326 for right now. But if this thing keeps running, you know I have to adjust them to 340. And then 350 is going to be your first support. Yeah. And then the resistances, what did I give you? Uh, four and four and 425. Yep. And then there was one more. pull that up to the year nice move after hours i gotta tell you yeah i got four dollars four dollars uh four twenty five and four fifty six so keep this on watch tomorrow the momentum's still sticking i think we got to trade this until the rest of the week and maybe longer it does have a twelve dollar price target 
We did have a year high of 1096, so don't take that 12 too serious, but when we start getting up above 9 to $10, if we get to see that high, that's going to be a good exit point for you, OTLK. Next one we're going to talk about is FSI. Yeah, so you know what, FSI. Um, so I wanted to mention this one to you guys because uh, this one here, we did... Um, I was just, it was actually a new one that I was looking at today. Flexible solutions, which we have talked about, by the way, in the past. Yeah. Pardon? We talked about this one before. Yeah, they and they had their earnings. And I like the fact that the earnings were up for the first quarter, up 102%. Um, they were up to 8.471 million compared to 4.2 million. Um, so, I'm, you know, the earnings is out of the way. And it's showing here some new 52-week highs. So that's actually good uh, to see that on uh, for the company. And I think you guys should have FSI on your watch for a potential continuation as a potential swing trade. And, you know, this could also come up as a day trade. The only thing is the volume, you know, still uncrowded, like around 436,000. So definitely keep FSI on your watch list. And Jim can talk to us about the chart on flexible solutions currently trading around three dollars and 19 cents flexible solutions is very flexible right now we had a yeah. double, double triple bottom down here at 120 and that's when the breakout breakout began when we had that crash in december and then she went ahead and she's ran all the way up to a parallel or to a diagonal rectangular pattern and had a high that had to break out on five different weeks couldn't break the high of three bulk three dollars and then today we broke out of that pattern. It did kind of pull back. I, I, you know, I don't know exactly what kind of chart this would. I would I'd call a rectangular because of the base of the candles. But I'm also seeing the wicks. You know, pretty long wicks on the bottom. You'd think this thing would pull back down to this support level where we had that double top on the three-year chart. But instead, today it had the big breakout up to 315. And that's, like I said, a three-year high. So, you know, everything is beyond what I can tell you what it could be right now. So I'm going to change this to a 20 day and I'm going to tell you where the supports are. Support is going to be right here at right around the 308 area for your first support. We did break out after hours to 319. Then you have a second support which is the top resistance that we had to break at three dollars and then we're going to go ahead and bring her on down to the third support level and that's right here around 290, 288 yeah, 288. So I'm going to change that to a red line. Get that 288 on there. And I'm going to change this one right here to the $3 level to the red line. And that's where we're going to call that second support. And then the first support, which I think we'll probably hit, will be right around that 308. And that's going to be your first. So those are the three support levels. And we'd like to see this break out higher. This is a beautiful run from 120 all the way up to 319 in five months. And that's the kind of trades I like to see. I really like to see them. We were in a 20-day consolidated period here from 274 up to 295 to 3 bucks, And it just couldn't break that. Then last week we had a fat finger here down all the way to 212. So if this thing knifes, and you see we've had some pretty engulfing candles that go down and also go up. These are engulfing candles when they're like 20 cents. That's an engulfing candle. And usually it broke and it broke past that engulf, then it consolidated. And then here we go again. You know, this is on an hour's chart right here on a daily. And we got 20 days we're looking at. So the resistance now we got to break is 319. The three supports, 308, 299, and 288. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Q. I mean, <laughs> I did the same thing Sunday. Well, pretty well, you're pretty close. K K K I Q. K I Q. So we talked about K I Q yesterday in the in the video. We talked about it was a triple bottom at 145, and you know K I Q. If you guys look at that today, um, it did have some activity and it did have some movement. Uh, still uncrowded. I mean, the stock went up as high as 164. Still hanging out here, you know, in that uh, like high 150s. Uh, so still keep it as a watch because it's still looking for uh, new highs. It's called Kelso Technologies. So definitely keep it on your watch. And Jim, your thoughts on that chart? 
I'll get quick about it here. Q I K I Q. I just can't. I can't help it. I mean, it's just Q Q Q. So uh, we pulled back a little bit here. We did have a try to a resistance high of 164 today. We did hit that high at 164. I have a 163.11. I have a support level. We had to break that resistance, which I called out yesterday. It was 144.89, and it brought it up to these two new highs here. So the support levels now are going to be, we don't want it to go any lower than the 144.89. If it does, it'll go down to 134.44. And I'm going to mark that in red right here because we're at a three-year high right now. Then the other support level is going to be right here at 144. Mark that in red. So I won't forget about it. Whoop, wrong one. Mark it in red. And then your first support is going to be right here at 151.84. So the resistance we got to break to get that three-year high out of this is at 163 to keep on going up. Now it can consolidate here for a day or two. And hit this low support at 144.89 and I'm going to be watching the tape in the level 2 and also it runs right in here to my my 34 EMA so let's pull up the daily chart one minute that's what I go by it did respect that EMA for the first part of the day and then still respected it once it hit that support level at 151.84 and bounced up and tried to break that resistance again couldn't do it so now it's pulled back to that support level again. It's under the 34 and it's above the 200 EMA. So let's see if we can keep this and break this above that 200 tomorrow. If not, it's going to pull back to those other two support levels that I called out. 134 or 144.89 or stick around at this 151.84. And that's right where that 200 is right now. So that's a pretty solid support. And that's KIQ. I got it right. And I got a funny wit about me, so that's the next ticker, WIT. Okay, so WIT is a company, India, and I came across it because I just liked what they do. I actually like the weekly chart, and um, they're into artificial intelligence. They're into the cloud. Um, they're into anything related to information technology. So very interesting company, very cool, cool things that they do. They've got a lot of clientele. Uh, but again, new 52 week highs on the stock. So definitely keep a watch on WIT. It could be, you know, a bit of a slow grinder. It's going to take time. Uh, but let me tell you, the volume wasn't bad. I mean, today was 2.52 million shares traded. So you've got to keep a watch on this one. Um, the high went as high as 462. But you know what? It opened at 455. So it didn't really move that much considering there was a lot of volume. So we're going to need more volume to really push this, but definitely keep this on your watch on WIT. And Jim, let's hear about the chart. Well, let's pull up the three year or the one year and see where we are. We are at a double top at a one year high. We had to break the resistance of 460. We did hit a 463. So the last four days, we bounced off a support level of 435, which was the previous high that we had, that we had to break out. It did pull right back to that support level. You see how I do that? Right there, bam, and it's respecting the 34 EMA right now on the yearly chart. So we had to break that resistance today. It pushed up about three pennies and pulled back. We have a spinning top on a, on a daily candle right now. The spinning top, it can go ahead and pull back to the support level of this 451. And I'm going to draw me another trend line right in here at 443. And I don't want to see it go no lower than this 435 if it decides to create a channel. And they do that. They create channels sometimes. But the last week, last four days, this has been a real strong stock all the way down to that 435 up to the 463. It's not a big gapper. I mean, it don't have big engulfing candles, but it does have pride and it is holding that resistance level. And let's go ahead and look at the daily one minute. I'm going to draw one more trend line right here for support level. I mean, we did pull back right here, so let's make it to 455. Okay, and the low support is going to be right down here at 448. So we don't want to see it tomorrow going any lower than that 448. And that's where I'm going to call my solid support level. But it can create a channel, and if it does that, 
is going to pull back to this 443 and actually I might make it 445 somewhere in there let me pull up the 20 day one more time and have a look at this 437 yeah I'm seeing a 437 support level so your low 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 support is going to be right down here at the 437 between the 435 and the 437 your second support channel is going to be the 443 to the 448 so they're not real big spreads and the support resistance we got to break is going to be this 462 area so those are the support levels let's break it out of this high and I'm also looking at a three-year chart and that brings us up to two other trend lines a double top at 468 and then a, a three-year high at 480 so I'm going to add them two to it and I'll show you what I'm talking about right here you see that that's the three-year chart we did have a 480 high if we can break this then this is an ascending more or less a uh, uh, oh it's a flag a pennant flag I don't know what you want to call that almost like a blowhorn pattern and it's just wanting to creep on up so we got to break the next resistance at 468 to get a three-year high of 480 and that's WIT, W-I-T, and that concludes the aftermarket report. Also want to mention, okay. also want to, mention yes. to sign up on our Twitter page. We have a Twitter link on the website, and we also have on the website a place where you can sign up to join your two-week uh, free trial with us. And if you like it, you can stay in the room. We run Trade Ideas Scanner, and we have option scanners in the room also. And Miss Vegas, have at it. Oh uh, yeah, so I just want to say uh, I actually have, uh, you know, uh, you know, I want to mention like some people are like, oh, um, there's so many rooms out there, and there's, you know, you know, I don't really. It's not about the paid rooms because I, I respect all the paid rooms. I have to tell you, people put in a lot of work, and you know, uh, people say, oh, well, there's so many free rooms. Yes, there are so many, but I will tell you, um, no, nothing against free rooms either, but they're not on voice all day. And, you know, they don't always do videos all day and, and maybe they give scanners, but they're not on voice teaching you about charts constantly. We're talking like eight hours a day. Like it's almost like a, like an educational school to be here with us. And, uh, you know, there was one of our members in the room. I mean, he was in some other rooms in the past that, you know, just would type messages all day. And, um, you know, he was learning, but it's very different when someone's verbally explaining it to you, you know, it's almost like reading a book versus watching a video. Some people are like the visual and some people like the audio and, and some people like the book. So, um, but anyhow, one of the people in the room that I just want to share and Jim, if you don't mind, I'm sending you a screenshot, but one person, uh, Joe in the room, you know, he mentioned that today specifically on a red day, he made uh, 80539 and it's not even that he made that money. I mean, he could have even made $100 or $200, but this is what I like what he said. He said, I wouldn't be able to do this if I hadn't learned chart patterns from Jim. And you know what? I got to say to you guys, like Jim is so patient and really explains charts really well. And, you know, some people sometimes like, you know, if you know charts, you're not going to want to listen to everything he's going to explain. And that's okay. But you know what? For a lot of newer people, it, it's helpful. It's also good to hear different strategies that he's looking at on charts. And I mean, I trade different than Jim too. And people are learning from my style. So, you know, I wouldn't be able to explain my style of trading if I was not able to talk on voice during the day. And I don't think Jim would be able to teach what he does if it wasn't for him being committed to being in the room for eight hours a day. And that is the difference between, you know, I would think a free room versus one that's not because the ones that are free, they don't have to be on voice all day or even at all, or they could be on and then say, okay, guys, see you later. I'm done my trading. And then they leave and that's okay. Cause you know what? They don't need to commit cause it's free and they can do what they want. But when you have a paid service, um, you know, you're committed, it's, uh, you know, we're committed to the team, to the room. So that's, you know, why we do this because we're, we have a commitment to be here eight hours a day. So I hope you can appreciate where we're coming from with that. Uh, but again, there's no risk involved. You can come for a free trial and you can see if it's worth it for you, you know, but anyways, Jim, congratulations. That was very nice feedback from Joe yep. and very, 
very uh, nice to hear that. So teaching people in real time. That's that's basically what I do it for is to share. Yeah. And I learned and one thing about what I've done is I've self-taught and I've learned probably my best teachers have been the people that have just started trading. It's not the experienced traders because they kind of keep it to themselves. It's the ones that ask the questions, the ones that, that, that want to learn, the ones that have the enthusiasm. And I guarantee it, if you have the enthusiasm and you have the time and you have the patience, you will be able to become a good trader. Those are the, That's what it takes. It takes ambition. It takes patience. And patience is one of the hardest ones to teach. I mean, we still have people in a room jumping in chasing trades. And you don't have to do that because just... For example, that OTLK, it ran all the way up. The share rotation was there. I mean, the volume was there, but yet it still pulls back. And if and we've had a couple good opportunities. If you just had the patience, you could have got in at a lot cheaper price and run that trade all the way up and break them new highs. And what comes up always comes back down. That's always something you got to remember when you're doing this. And some people, you know, it's just the way it is. It's just like gravity. And history always repeats itself. So this is going to be it for the aftermarket report. We try to keep. Wow! It. Oh my God! Look at OTLK. So. Uh oh. <laughs> so before we go, it's currently at it broke the high of day of three seventy five, and it's currently at three seventy seven. And uh, Jim did say that next resistance was four and four twenty five. So I did post that on Stock Twits. So and on twitter so if you're following you would know that if you're in this trade so congrats on otlk and uh it's okay to learn about float rotation wonderful good job guys have yep. a good night see you tomorrow this is the aftermarket report with vegas and jim today's date may 20th 2019 and we love stocks Thank you.